and welcome back to the Donahue Group. We have so. our panel members chatting already. We can hardly wait to get into it. <laughs> <laughs> Joining me for this uh, round of discussion, Ken Risto from the Sheboygan Area School District running the Social Studies de uh, Department. <laughs> Course of study. Running the school system. <laughs> and Coordinating. Soon, yeah. And soon to be running the school system. Oh. Uh, Isn't he trouble now? Every episode it gets worse. Um, Isn't that what he told us? Darth, <laughs> Darth Vader. Tom Paneski in a quiet role at the University of Wisconsin. You're Chicago. welcome to come to the university uh, again. As a math I professor. appreciate the invitation, <laughs> Tom. Thanks. Cal Potter has it best of all. He's retired, former state senator. and. Assistant Superintendent for Library Services at uh, DPI, and I'm Mary Lynn Donahue, local attorney, and still practicing law, at least for a little while. So um, we're talking about state issues, or getting extending our scope a little bit about, um, beyond uh, local issues uh, in this episode. I guess it's not really an episode, is it? I mean, it is for me. No, you know, kind of like <laughs> this experience. <laughs> this experience. In this chapter. I'm another episode. So, <laughs> in any event. Um, uh, we a um, uh, bunch of interesting things to talk about. Um, we had touched last time on the death penalty. Um, the Senate joint resolution, as I understand, um, with some modifications, has now been forwarded to the Assembly for its consideration. Um, uh, various polls tell you various things depending on how you word questions as to whether or not people are interested in the or believe that the death penalty should be imposed. It's an interesting time with the Zachariah, Zacharias Masawi. Did I get that Very right? Good. Thank you, Mr. Mm -hmm. Social Studies. Um, uh, and really always thinks he's smarter than I am and generally is, so this is just yet another example. Um, that jury is out even as we speak now. Um, On that question this, or the question of the Zowie's death penalty? The, the, uh, thank you. Um, Stephen Avery, of course, <laughs> that's just a kind of a hideous yeah. situation that, I mean, it's the, the right time, right kind of thing. Um, any thoughts, any additional thoughts on, I'm pretty sure it's going to come out of the assembly. I can't imagine that it would not, and uh, not subject to the governor's veto, uh, because it will be a constitutional amendment. Well, it's going to be advisory referendum. Yeah. Yes, that is true. Yeah. The that, previous attempts by uh, uh, Mr. Lassay, uh, Senator Lassay, who's kind of sort of made a career on trying to reinstitute a death penalty in the state, um, seeing... Uh, no success in having a constitutional amendment passed, which needed to pass in two successive legislative sessions and then put on the ballot, mm -hmm. did succeed in getting the sufficient votes for an advisory referendum. And I presume there are some there who had re reservations about voting yes, but saying, well, who, who's against asking the people what, mm -hmm. they, what, what their thoughts are? Mm -hmm. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, whether it does pass or not, or even gets out of assembly, because there are some religious groups uh, uh, Catholic conference is not support. I know uh, church I'm a member of is not in support of the death penalty. So there are certain uh, religious groups that have lobbied the legislature in the past against the death penalty and have not had it come to a vote. So it would be interesting uh, to see if this goes forth for the November election. I wouldn't surprise me if it did. I, can, I have to think that it's going to. Yeah. Uh -uh. Oh, what's, the, what's the procedure? Because if it goes before the... In, if it comes up in November, we vote on it and say it passes, then what, you have to do it again? Well, that, the, that would set the stage. What, 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 what I think the game plan here for the proponents is that there are legislators in the past who say, well, I'm not sure what my constituents believe. I'll therefore I'll go with the Catholic Conference and the council churches who are against it um, sure. and in their vote against it in the committees and on the floor of the legislature. Now you put it on the re re advisory referendum and it passes 70-30, let's say, theoretically. Mm -hmm. uh, all of a sudden, they're in a difficult position when this thing comes up again as a constitutional amendment to vote no because they see their political opponents saying, well, the vote in your district was 70-30. What are you voting against this for? Pretty soon, all of a sudden, it becomes a very political issue. Uh, representative versus constituent opinion type situation. And thanks for pointing out that it is an advisory referendum. I, th I think I m had missed that. I thought it was just the regular process. Well, the gay we rights one is the constitutional okay. amendment that will be in November that will be a constitutional amendment. You so there will be a referendum on the death penalty and then a constitutional amendment, the gay votes, if you will, on gay marriage in yes. November. Yes. Which would tend to turn out sort of the more conservative I voter. I think uh, uh, some conservative pundits would say that there was some thinking behind that, but we'll never know. Well, that's right out of the Karl Rove 
manual, right? It sure is. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying it's yep. a bad thing. I'm just simply saying that's, yep. that's yep. where the game yep. is played. Tom, you think, well, you'd, you'd think well, that would be a good thing. We got we to we bring up the camp. Somebody will say something about campaign finance, which is out of some other manual. I don't know. <laughs> That's what well, I, I don't saying. think we're having any constitutional amendments it's or voter campaign, referendums on campaign, campaign financing. financing. No. I just think, you know, it's unfortunate, but I just think that now that a couple of people are going to jail, I think the voters are going to, you know, get back to living their lives and and thinking, well, they've got the message, now they'll behave themselves, and that's a, that's a delusion, that's an illusion. I I well, I mean, I'll, let me just, if you get people out to vote, I mean, wh wh however you get them out to mm -hmm. vote, the more people that vote, sure. the better representative, representative uh, government you have. So if you get 60% of the people out to vote because you put those, uh, those uh, items on, the constitutional amendment and then the advisory amendment. Certainly one could argue that the gay marriage amendment is completely unnecessary and is but it gets nothing people else. out to vote huh. people feel strongly about that issue and mm -hmm. and so they'll and, come out and vote and, and see they may be democratic party. voters uh, you know so otherwise they'd be sitting home mm -hmm. I, just, you know, I think the democratic party should stop sitting in the cower in the, in the corner and cowering over these issues and step up and actually be an opposition party and let's have a vigorous debate on right. both those issues you yeah. win lose or draw I mean uh, but this idea that we're going to criticize Republicans for putting issues on the table for people to talk about is, I think, really cowardly. Let's well, bring, are, you, know, you know, to quote the president, let's bring it on. One of the troubling <laughs> aspects, Bring these discussions um, on. Matter of fact, uh, I, I just happened to be reading an article the other day of the amendment itself. Mm. And it, it goes on, it not only says gay marriage is between a man and a woman, but it also goes on and says prohibits other such unions That's correct. And, and so on. And it gets into this whole area of uh, joint type of uh, unions as well as possible agreements, contractual agreements on benefits. And I'm not so sure that everybody appreciates uh, the possible far-reaching effects of the two sentences that are making up this amendment. I wish they would have simply stopped at the gay marriage yeah, thing. Cleaner. And, and, uh, yes, cleaner. and then, yeah. but now, well, the proponents are saying, well, we didn't mean it that way. Well, and they said, well, that'll be clarified. Well, how's it going to be clarified? It's going to be clarified in the same things they're criticizing. Judicial uh, judges are going to have to make a determination. What contract, what situation is really unconstitutional? And so we're opening up a whole can of worms of maybe denying some people some benefits they now have. That's what I'm, and it might be intended, uh, the intended consequences here might be more far-reaching than some people are, are, are well, saying. You're absolutely right. This amendment, this amendment bars not only any potential in Wisconsin for a gay marriage, it, it bans civil unions of all shape, yeah. manner, and form. And then the question then becomes, what happens if two people are in some sort of a committed relationship and one, chooses, one wants to know about medical information or the HIPAA laws? You know, all those types of issues. And I, don't, and I don't believe for a second that the drafters of this amendment, I mean, they hire lawyers, and lawyers are supposed to be They knew what they good. were doing. They knew exactly sure what they were doing. Sure they, they, were, they just decided to go for the whole loaf of bread rather than maybe three-fourths of the loaf. And the fault and, of the other good conservatives, who may not be that far out on the limb, yeah. uh, was that they went along. And that's one thing I, I sometimes fault uh, conservatives today. When some people say jump, they say how oh, high. You know, they don't question saying, well, I may agree with half the loaf here, and let's see if we can work out, work out something that's fair and, and maybe a better question. But so much of the stuff that's coming down the pike now is just, uh, it is from the original authors, and it's extreme, and everybody else just sort of went along, either they're afraid to or whatever the motivation is, but they're not questioning it. Well, it'll be interesting to see what, if any, kind of grassroots movement does come out to at least try to explain the ramifications, the long-term effects uh, of, of, of what might, in fact, happen. And, uh, um, and it will be interesting. I agree. We need to not be cowardly. We need to kind of get out and talk about these issues and, uh, and not be afraid of them. But it is... Uh, it is interesting. It's kind of like at this point, it's the third, the third uh, track. And I mean, you, you used to say Social Security was the the what do they call it? The electric third rail. Third, third rail, rail. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, the third rail of American politics, and this kind of seems to have become a new third rail. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's uh, it's interesting mm -hmm. to to see how that's going to play out. But 
likely will get more voters out. And, and, uh, yeah, and I think, I think we benefit by that. We get well, more voters out. Yeah. Let's talk about um, who they're going to vote for. Tom, the Republicans have not yet come up with an opponent for Senator Cole. Will you consider it? <laughs> <laughs> right here and now. Right here and now. Oh, thank, you for the, the thank you for the trust. <laughs> I consider running against him, but that's a whole other matter. That's a whole other matter. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, I have, I have Only the Democrats 13 have university <laughs> campuses. I got little sites all over. I can, so you've got, you've got, <laughs> your, campaign you've got your campaign network all <laughs> set up. Set all set up to go. Republicans all across the state of Wisconsin. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Cole is the classic Teflon senator. Feingold, by design, is the classic Velcro uh, senator. Everything <laughs> sticks to Feingold, and that's the way he wants it. I mean, Cole is as smooth as they come, and uh, well, or, and non or nondescript as it comes. Right, who is going to be the, who is gonna be the candidate? I have no clue. I haven't heard either. I have. It's the the best kept secret. I keep thinking, who's going to be the candidate? Who's going to be the candidate? You know, they hint maybe Thompson, but I don't know. Although but I did read a poll that said that if Tommy came back and ran against Cole, he'd win. Oh, really? I can't believe that's true. <clears throat> but it's means until he, that means nothing, yeah. It means until absolutely it's, nothing. Until you get I mean, into a you, campaign. And yeah. I mean, the same thing with Doyle is that, you know, if Tommy came back and decided to run against Doyle, I don't think you can ever go home again. I agree and with that. At least as You've far as the it. governorship yeah. uh, goes. And, uh, um, well, that happened once with the president. Who was it uh, that got elected twice with a four-year term in between? Grover uh, Cleveland. Grover Cleveland. <laughs> Grover Cleveland. Very good. I want to give her a chance Does to answer that? first. <laughs> <laughs> so he went home again. I mean, he got a, you know, just didn't get elected, then he came back. There so it go. could happen. It, it could, could happen. happen. It yeah. could happen. But... Uh, but I think it will be interesting, and I think Tim Mark Michael. Mark that down. Yeah, yeah, right. It'll cause you. Um, Tim Michael tried to make a good run against um, against Russ Feingold last time, and it was a credible run. Um, but I think Feingold has really established himself as as mm -hmm. a most interesting person, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, and won all but eleven counties. Uh, so 61 out of 72 counties, and just was doing the math in my okay. head. So, um, so when is the uh, when's the Republican convention? I don't even know that. Do you? Is that Usually coming it's up? June. Is it in June? So we still have some time to wait. Yeah, uh -huh. and typically the Democrats are in June as well, isn't that yeah. right? Yes. Yeah. Usually one week after. You know, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Locally, um, an interesting race potentially uh, developing uh, between Joe Leibham, Senator Leibham who won by 47 votes, beating uh, Jim Baumgart last time, being challenged by a young man out of Manitowoc whose name is Aulik, Jamie Aulik, um, an Iraq Army veteran, a uh, young man. And uh, the only, I've gotten a campaign letter from him, and I have to say it was fairly sophisticated for somebody who is obviously brand new at this kind of work. And uh, uh, I personally consider that Joe Leibham is pretty much unbeatable. Uh, I mean, it, I think he's extremely good at constituent politics. And, I'd agree and with his, that. Yeah. His PR is, it's always out there. Um, Cal, I don't know, just as a, a veteran of the legislature, does somebody like Jamie Ollick have a chance against Liveham? And if he does, what would do it? Well, you have to become known, first of all. Uh, one of his liabilities, I guess, will be where he's coming from. He's coming from the third. Uh, as we see it, the third assembly district in the Senate district. Two of the districts are Sheboygan, and uh, usually the strength has always been uh, the person who comes out of the county where the two districts are has, has the advantage, I think. It goes back to uh, Ernie Kepler, even if you remember Ernie Kepler had the Sheboygan Assembly District, the rural Sheboygan District, and Ozaukee County, which was one assembly district, and even Democratic attempts uh, were very difficult to challenge successfully Ernie Kepler. I mean, he was a middle-of-the-road Republican and well-liked, mm -hmm. but the fact of the matter is he, he did well in the city of Sheboygan, a Democratic area, took the other two assembly districts, which were Republican, and did very well in the, in the state Senate. Uh, now with the reapportionment that has occurred uh, since, uh, well, 1980, uh, we've had the Manitowoc-Sheboygan Senate district, but the two seats 
in the assembly of the three are in Sheboygan County. Mm -hmm. So he comes to Manadoc. So what, I, what I'm getting around to is he has to become known in two of those assembly districts. The name Olek is a known name in Manitowoc. It is a Democratic uh, district, uh, mm -hmm. Ziegelbauer assembly seat. And you do have the, uh, the uh, Van Aquin seat in Sheboygan. Uh, for as far as a democratic seat. So two of the three seats are held by democratic assembly people. But you do have to get known in this place where Libem lives, and Li Libem lives in Sheboygan. Okay. So he has a lot of name recognition. And, and what Libem has now... I would Libem say he's incredibly now, well known, yeah. Yeah, and he's, oh, sure. he's got name recognition. And he's got the mm -hmm. power now of the incumbency, which Baumgart had last time. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was, it was a challenger and, and an incumbent. Uh, and the 47 votes would not reflect the same situation this time. Because, oh, by no means. Yeah, because no the Alec Baumgart uh, comparison of uh, being well known and having campaigned for years is just not there anymore. Oh, I know, I know. So he has a lot of work to, to do. Yeah, and typically young candidates who come up against well established and well financed incumbents almost. Oh, he will be well financed. Um, mm -hmm. Almost never. It's hard for them to, to, to get any traction, but. I was just, I was amazed by this letter that he sent out. It had a degree of sophistication to it and targeted some issues that I thought would be interesting issues. And uh, What was he focusing on? Because I, I didn't receive that letter. Um, working families. Um, the, 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 the focus is on working families. And uh, it's one of those two-page fundraising letters that there must be somebody somewhere who says that it's a good <laughs> idea to have two or three pages of, of text because all the ones we get always have that, uh, and this they one did. They send us the lawyers who read them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and evidently teachers as well. Yeah, right? but uh, uh, I think um, obviously choosing the issue is how you win. Yeah. He He's well win. educated. Yeah. He's getting his master's degree this May from the LaFollette Institute in uh, UW-Madison in public policy, I believe. So that's strike two. Yeah. yeah. So well, she was saying it was, was well-read. He's not known and he's well-educated. And his wife is a teacher. His wife uh, is a strike teacher. three. <laughs> he may as well stay home. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> there was a room the other day where I was complimented for being well-educated, and I was, it was a rare moment. <laughs> I was so pleased to be in a room that values somebody who's educated. Thank you. So cynical. Just I'm so just being cynical. realistic in these weird and twisted times. There you go. So. Um, the, um, speaking of which, the, uh, I found a poll uh, on the uh, Attorney General's race. First of all, we do have to say that Attorney uh, General Lautenschlager has returned contributions to the International Profit Associates. Um, this is the, um, a group that the Department of Justice was investigating. Uh, she's calling on all uh, election opponents to divest themselves of contributions from individuals associated with entities that the Justice Department has prosecuted. And given the, you know, the political climate these days, that might be quite a few. Um, yeah, who's <laughs> going to be left to contribute? <laughs> Mark Green had to give back $32,000, I think, didn't have to, chose to return $32,000 from Tom DeLay. Let's just divert for just a little bit. Um, my sense is that Walker dropping out of the uh, governor's race, um, not challenging Mark Green, does make it easier for Green, obviously, mm -hmm. and significantly more difficult for Doyle. I mean, is Green, I think Green's a fairly strong candidate. Well financed. Mm -hmm. well, everybody's well financed these days. Well, under, he's an incumbent, a congressperson who has right. uh, had a number of years of developing a fund which uh, has been able to transfer now to a governor's race. Yeah, and um, uh, even with the th returning the $32,000, he's apparently not impoverished. So I think it's going to be... Where is the governor? Yeah, well, just happened to have a poll here that was reported on April 12th uh, in Madison newspapers. Um, two polls, and of course they tell us two different things. Doyle is leading in the St. Norbert poll. Uh, 43 to 35 percent, while they are tied, Green and Doyle, in a strategic vision poll. And uh, so I thought, I thought that was. I like reading polls. I evidently. I think yeah. there. I think there's some criticism afoot here. I don't know. Well, no. just for that, let me tell you about the Lautenschlager, Falk, Bucher, Van Hollen polls. <laughs> <laughs> 
is the poll asking them if they know any of them? They, well, they, they do. Besides the incumbent. They do break out okay. those statistics, but if I start reciting those, then everybody at home is going to fall will asleep. Sleep. And, we'll sleep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I get fired. Then move and, on to American Idol. <laughs> yeah, <right>. exactly. <laughs> You're just a wonderful singer. Um, the um, Lautenschlager and Falk are tied in this poll. However, both of them taken individually, Schwetz, as it were, or significantly outpoll their Republican opponents, which I thought was interesting. Mm -hmm. So. Um, well, they're both well known. I mean, yeah, both. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you look at previous political statewide offices, none of the Republicans have really had the name recognition that Falk and Lautenschlager have had. That's true. Yeah. Well, Booker's, I mean, he's yeah, prosecuted he lost the, some, yeah, some fairly He lost important. the Chamorro case. That's going to be a big <laughs> you know, plus for him, <laughs> isn't it? Yes. it well, Jerry Boyle, you know, that guy kind of has a magic touch. And uh, he handled, handed yeah. uh, E. Michael McCann. Did I read his first felony trial loss in 32 years? Really? Yeah, I read that. I mean, that's astonishing. Oh, yeah. And Jerry Boyle's a very, very good lawyer, but I, I understand that E. Michael McCann is as well. So kind of going out well, like Brett Favre. if those would testify, I would tell the truth, it might be a different matter. <laughs> <laughs> let, let me let the, the Falk, uh, Lautenschlager, Attorney Generals. Right now, they're going to have a, the primary is September. So that'll, but the conventions occur before then. Do Will the Democrats come out and endorse one of the two? Or actually at the Republican convention, will the Republicans come out and endorse one of the candidates? One would certainly think so. The, the Democrats do not endorse in primaries. Okay. Uh, Republicans have, but ever since the Lee Dreyfus uh, era, there's been a reluctance to do so. And so there have been a number of okay. occasions where they have not followed through because they get egg on their face as they did with the Lee Dreyfus. Lee Dreyfus, yeah. okay. So they, yeah. you'll just get a little, yeah. it'll be a big party for both. Could be. Lautenschlager Could be okay. clearly leads uh, Falk among Democratic voters, according to this poll. This is um, Wisconsin Public Radio, St. Norbert, and I think they do a good job. Yeah, they've um, historically been pretty close. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Lautenschlager, 36%, Falk, 26%, uh, but they're tied among, virtually tied among independents. And then, um, uh, Booker is 10 points behind both of them, and Van Hollen, again, well, well behind uh, both. Van Hollen is clearly, I think, the least known among mm -hmm. them, and so I think, um, I think that's interesting. But one, I think we're going to see a whole lot of TV ads that we're just not really and interested in. And powerful ones, I think, yeah. uh, in the strong driving situation. Yep. yep. Yeah. This is going to get, they're going to go ugly early. Yes. Yep. Yeah. And... Um, Oh, you don't have to. I mean, given the, given the dynamics of this, it's, how else would one even have a chance of winning? Yeah. I mean, I just, I mean, an attorney general. Well, especially in the Republican column, if those folks yeah. are that far behind, uh, negative ads tend to be those used early on by people who are far behind because they get they're, attention. And, and, they're and, they're and, more bring us, and to bring us back around, yeah. I got to think that, you know, that somebody's going to ask the question real soon once we get the campaign, does that attorney general, you know, support the capital punishment referendum? Exactly. And then exactly. we can then we can do the soft on crime shtick until yep. we're all yep. ready to go home and cry in our in our pillow. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, there you go. There we go. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Just moving off Not of politics. Not running for public office here. <laughs> that's right. I think we fixed that here. That yep, you could right. never do that. <laughs> no, I can't do that. Um, you burned that bridge. <laughs> Burn the tapes. Scott. I continue to be fascinated, and I think my fascination is somewhat limited here, uh, with the Accenture contract that the State Elections Board is involved with. Um, uh, they, under the Help, America's, Help Americans Vote Act, HAVA, HAVA Heart, um, uh, we need to prepare a statewide uh, voter registration list. Uh, Minnesota managed to do it for $5 million. We're spending $23 million for something. And still don't have a product. And still don't have a product. Right. I mean, this is crazy. Yes. And why? Why can Minnesota do it and we can't? Yeah. And I don't I, like the people who they hired apparently don't do a very good job. That's what's <laughs> Why happened. Why did they hire the people from Minnesota? Well, I don't know what Minnesota did. Does anybody know? Did they Minnesota used state do workers. It in yeah. Did they do it in-house? They, they did, did it in-house. In okay. Yeah. And we, so this um, would be a case for against privatization. Pardon me, against privatization. Well, privatization efforts uh, in the state of Wisconsin in recent years, at least as I've read, have certainly not been particularly successful uh, or 
economical, mm. but in any event, um, the, um, we are now, as I understand it, kind of left holding the Accenture bag all by ourselves because even Wyoming, <laughs> which was the last state with us that, that had hired Accenture that hadn't bailed out, even Wyoming has bailed out. So mm. we're really kind of holding the bag here. And I- Well, this I, company must have plenty of time on their hands now. They should be able to get it right. <laughs> wow. Well, they couldn't get it for January 1st. So then there was a suggestion, well, surely we'll have it for the April election. No, oh. let's hold off and make sure we can really do it right, uh, you know, and we'll do it for the November mm -hmm. election. And now, according to the uh, journal Sentinel... Which November election? There you go. <laughs> it's like, we're going to finish your house in December. We're just not going to tell you what year. <laughs> and I think that that is uh, essentially what's going on, uh, is going on around here. But um, I don't know what the status is of the bill, Senate Bill 1, to merge the State Elections Board with the Ethics Commission and create essentially a new organization. Do you? Well, I, 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 I am a member of Common Cause, and so uh, Mr. Heck sends me weekly uh, emails. And I do, the last one I got is that uh, uh, Representative Gard and a couple of the leaders in the, in the Assembly were not planning on putting the bill up in the final week, not just next week, of the legislative session. And I guess, uh, Common Cause and others are trying to shake the bushes out there, saying, call your legislator, tell them, demand that this, at least this bill, if we can't get the public financing bill, which is another bill yeah. uh, up, at least pass Senate Bill 1, which easily passed, bipartisanship uh, prevailed in the Senate, do so in the Assembly. So public pressure on leadership in the Assembly is what's going on right now to get it up. And what would the timeline be? Just a week, did you say? Well, they have a week. They, their session, they can extend it, but their uh, previous calendar was next week was to take up anything that's pending from okay. the last roughly year and a quarter. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, it's the Elections Board has had a kind of a rough time in, in recent years. And, uh, it's not been ineffective. Yeah, I mean it's it's half Republican, half Democrat. The Democrats vote one way, the Republicans vote the other way, and nothing gets done. Yeah. Nobody gets prosecuted, nobody gets accused. It's a joke, is what it is. It's, it really is. Yeah, and uh, remember, locally, Curtis McKay was on the board, and he said you just get a, a sandwich before we ring off. Just to say, Matt Santos did win the election, and I'm predicting that Arnie Vinnick is going to be the new vice president. <laughs> just so that everybody knows. Thank you for joining us.